Hey there folks, welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art, and culture. And today we're gonna to be talking about the debut album from Kyle Kraft called Dolls of Highland. So before I start here, let me talk a little bit about my schedule again. Right now I'm at a bit of a weird spot. I've got some upcoming releases that, yes, of course I'm gonna be covering them, but a few records in my backlog have some pretty extensive discographies to revisit to make sure I'm up to speed. So yes, I'm intending to cover Aesop Rock, but I just need some time to completely absorb his existing material. He's kind of a dense rapper, if you don't know. As such, I did the next best thing, went over to Pitchfork and scrounged around for an act that looked interesting with a pretty small discography, and here we are. So, introductions in case you haven't heard about this guy. And I reckon that's probably a strong possibility, given that outside of the critical set, he hasn't made a huge splash just yet. Kyle Kraft is a Louisiana songwriter who started off crafting some rough-edged southern glam rock before moving to Portland and signing with Sub Pop. Now, immediately for me, that's a good sign. Sub Pop tends to have a good reputation with signees, and I was kind of intrigued by what I heard about Kyle Kraft, blending a certain sort of southern carnival theatrical with rough edge, early David Bowie-esque melodic grooves. And while I wasn't entirely convinced his debut would be a great album, that sort of style can get a little bit gimmicky in one note, if not played with a lot of smart songwriting and poise. And yeah, I can feel kind of dated coming out of the 70s, but at the very least, it would make for a release with a lot of personality that would probably be right up my alley if nobody else's. So I dug into his debut album, Dolls of Highland. What do we get? Well, remember when I said a couple days ago that I was probably the wrong person to be covering Drake's newest album, Views, thanks to all the overexposure? Well, I suspect I might not be the best person to cover this album either, and yet for a very different reason, because this album, it just bypassed all my critical sensibilities and went straight to the soul of my love for 70s rock and roll of so many stripes. I initially referenced David Bowie in discussing this album, but Kyle Kraft's blend is so much more peculiar and defiantly his own. Picking up chunks of ramshackle southern rock and marrying to the larger life portraits you find in a Jim Steinman song. And considering Kyle Kraft's vocals remind me more than a bit of a bat out of hell era meatloaf, that's far from a bad thing. In other words, yeah, this album is amazing. Probably gonna be one of the best of the year and definitely a favorite of mine. You know what, that's probably the best place to start with, Kyle Kraft himself. Rarely has there been a frontman that's impressed me this much right out of the gate. And sure, part of it is a major credit to his vocal production that gives him just enough space to appear larger in life, especially on a few moments of multi-tracking that really sound more than welcome. They just make him sound fantastic, but not to the point where fears the need to smother him out in reverb. It's because part of this is that Kyle Kraft is one hell of a presence behind the microphone. Not always the most refined performer, but he doesn't need to be. With a rawness to his huge range, there's a certain ragged theatricality that feels ground in the same huge, wild danger that informed Meatloaf's best work in the 70s. There's a sort of larger-than-life, earnest presence that runs straight up to the line of high camp and occasionally goes over it, and it can prove to be shockingly earnest and powerful regardless. To get only on the few ballads, like the heavily layered Beatles pastiche Trinidad Beach before I ride. And so yeah, is it garish and a little bit ridiculous when you think about it? Oh god, yes it is. But Kyle Kraft commits to it with such force and is so damn convincing, I'm inclined to buy into all of it. This is no cartoonish caricature. He is selling these songs and I'm buying it. Granted, a major factor of that is the instrumentation. A peculiar sort of glam rock blend that Kyle Kraft makes his own. And it's a little bit tricky to properly describe too, especially in comparison with an act like Meatloaf, who always had the excuse of huge theatrical walls of sound to drive his songs. Kyle Kraft's scale is significantly smaller, necessarily, but a lot more textured and unique. Jaunty pianos, CD organs, choppy acoustic strumming to match the prominent, fuzzed-out guitar work and the warm cushion of bass, and all with a slightly washed-out texture that reflects a very live theater setting, with sort of dilapidated theater on the edge of town, inhabited by the leftovers of punk, goth, and alternative scene that would never fit into a religious Louisiana town. Production, I should add, that Kyle Kraft all handled himself, and it sounds fantastic. And that seediness definitely creeps into the compositions as well. Most are grounded in fragments of traditional country or a little bit of rock and roll, but just like when Jim Steinman did it in the 70s, Kyle Kraft subverts those conventional song structures in something that's a little bit rough around the edges, a little bit more dangerous, but just as catchy. And I really dig how Kyle Kraft updates the gothic sensibility of the sound, most notably by injecting the southern side of it. Plenty of harmonica and bluesy accordion, thicker acoustic elements that reflect some of the country melodies that I really appreciated. And instead of tilting into the over-the-top horror kitsch and tropes of the 70s in that time, Kyle Kraft draws more in tendencies that are more Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds esque or Ice Age than Meatloaf, but digging deeper into religious iconography and working to humanize the distinct characters in his music. But really, that's just the method, and we're coming to the lyrics in a second. None of this would have worked if the songs didn't deliver, and by the nine hells, they definitely do. That great guitar melody driving Berlin, the sharper strumming that breaks into the accordion solo on Lady of the Ark, that phenomenal hook on Balmaria, the blast of trumpet on Gloom Girl that fits in way better. 
better than I would have expected. That incredibly bright piano line that leaves in some hints of Spanish guitar and that fuzzed out background on Black Mary, especially those echoing high notes in the solo of Pentecost, they just sound so good. Now, if I were to criticize the instrumentation, well, I can imagine some of them might say the drums are a little bit muddy, but I also find them well blended enough for it not to matter. But there are more than a few tracks that feel a little bit aborted for short. Most only the title track or the psychedelic Trinidad Beach Before I Ride. Not bad songs, but I would have no problem with either track getting a little bit more meat on it. They don't quite feel finished to me. Same thing with Black Mary. The song ends a little bit abruptly. And the reason for all that, the reason I want to hear more is the lyrics and themes. This is where Kyle Kraft really surprised me because on the surface, this is supposedly a breakup album. And considering it's heritage in 70s rock and a focus specifically on women across this album, the Dolls of Highland, I was expecting plenty of tracks with some kind of unsettling implications. The truth is that Kyle Kraft is a lot smarter than that and a lot more self-aware. We definitely get women framed as strippers, gothic lounge singers, hardage punks, thieves of virginity, or even outright succubies, the daughters of demons and devils, but it never frames any of them as totally Totally being in the wrong, at least in comparison with their male counterparts. Take Berlin or Black Mary. One song focuses on a stripper, the other one on a cougar, but it's surprisingly sympathetic to both of them. In the former case, showing her dominance of the situation, the guy kind of being a little bit pathetic. In the latter case, more nuanced, speaking to the lonely melancholy that Kraft wishes that he can help relieve. Or take Lady of the Art, a song framing an ex-girlfriend as an angel who gets seduced and then dumped by another guy, framed as a fallen angel. But again, it's never cast in a vengeful light that she got her just deserved for leaving him. It helps matters that Kyle Kraft is far from a flattering character himself. His odd vocal tone doesn't exactly render him all that attractive, and when he does play an active role in the song, the writing doesn't shy away from showing how the relationships that he was in were probably doomed anyways, and he's mostly coming to grips with that, or being forced to. Future Mid-City Massacre, great example, where both he and his ex almost seem to be reveling in their newfound freedom, although it's implied that they're both hiding a lot more pain than they should just beneath the surface, and it probably could come out in a bad way. Or take Val Maria, where his choice to abandon and the titular singer after she showed real vulnerability to him, he only wandered for a season after all, has left her stranded, her songs never being heard as time moves on, and it's clear that he's the real villain here. And this leads us to the themes and subtext of this album. Because you can definitely make an argument that on much of this album, Kyle Kraft is revisiting the goth or alternative scene of his youth, only to see it collapsing beneath his feet as people grow up and move on. And there is pathos there in the feeling of just being left behind or ignored, not just by partners, and tracks like Gloom Girl indicate that both sides do it and there really isn't much of an excuse for anyone but a lot of times it's just being left behind by time itself relics of the past and while i do really love pentecost for showing an alternative couple try to conform to the mainstream only to buckle under religious expectations and strictures as cowcraft offers them one more night just cut loose and unload the barrel that they'd be put into their head the title track shows that right after that things are changing regardless and while cowcraft is definitely going to celebrate those who keep the faith like on jane beat the raper the metaphor kind of on the nose but god damn it clicks the song's great, but the final track, Three Candles, it's the sobering realization that both sides do end up moving on. Kyle Kraft realizes that he probably wasn't the best fit for his ex, and while he knows that her new partner will never kiss her the same way he did, her new relationship probably makes more sense and will probably last longer, and he's still kind of a mess right now. Quite literally, an old flame. So in short, yeah, uh, okay, this album is absolutely awesome and deserves so much attention that it's probably gonna get. Kyle Kraft's fusion about five different brands of 70s rock might be directly aimed at my sweet spot, but it gets all the way there thanks to great writing, excellent melodies, and one of the most promising frontmen I've heard a long time in rock. And yeah, it's probably been one of the best albums of the year, at least for me, so it's getting a 9 out of 10 and the highest of my recommendations, especially if you're a Meatloaf fan like I am to some extent. Otherwise, it's one of the most catchy, genuinely fun, got tinged records with a real brain and heart behind it that I've heard this year and it's definitely worth all your time. Check this out, you won't regret it. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching. If you'd like to like and subscribe, I'd be more than grateful. I can imagine most of you probably haven't heard this album yet, but I got the poll up here. What did you guys think of it? Did you like it? Do you think it was as good as I did? I know I'm a total sucker for this, but I really did love this. Beyond that, anything else I might be able to do to improve my presentation, or any other albums coming out that you want me to take a look at, I will be more than happy to give them a listen. Till then, I'm Mark, you're watching Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.